going on people we are top loop tv here hope you're all doing well and good in quarantine i don't know if you saw yesterday but me and Simeon went up against each other in a Tottenham quiz and Simeon bit the dust, bit the cheated. dust as, <laughs> as that's what happened. Took the crown as, a few, as the few we fans are, have pointed out. No. As Ben took the crown of the We Are Tottenham TV Tottenham. Hang on, no, that, that crown is being taken back. There's no monarchy here. Absolutely no, 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 no chance. No, no, no. You got points of which were which you shouldn't have gotten. And I've been cheated. We're going to have a rematch and we have to arrange that because I ain't accepting that result. There was one point where I shouldn't have got. I, I completely accept that. But you did lose by two points. No, so. no, no, no. And he gave you some extra points at the end. I'm not having it. I'm actually, no, I'm not having it. <laughs> Absolutely no chance. Well, let's, let's, no let's, chance. Uh, let's let the viewers decide. Should Simeon get a rematch? Is he warranted of a rematch? Let us know in the comment section below. Said he can't just get cheap points like that. No chance. No <laughs> chance. But we do have some news to talk about today. Um, let's start off with the news that's on everyone's lips, and that is around Harry Kane and his conversation on Instagram Live yesterday with Jamie Redknapp. Uh, let me just play the clip, a uh, little 50 second clip for you just now um, about what he did say. I ask this, this question a lot. Um, it's, it's one of them things, you know, I'm, I couldn't say yes, I couldn't say no. I, I love Spurs, I'd always love Spurs, but um, yeah, it's one of them things, you know, I've, I've always said if, if I don't feel we're progressing as a team or going in, in the right direction, then um, I'm not someone to just stay there for for the, for the sake of it, you know. I'm, I'm an ambitious player. I want to improve. I want to get better. I want to become one of the top top players. So it all depends on kind of what happens as a team and how we progress as a team. So um, yeah, it's it's not a definite. I'm going to stay there forever, but it's it's not a no. It's not a no either. This is a good question. I like this one. This is from Robert James, the Premier League's highest ever scorer or Premier League winner. Uh, Premier League winner. All right, so, so what do we make about uh, these comments? Uh, to be honest, there's nothing we haven't heard before from Harry yeah. Kane. He said, he said it before that if the team doesn't progress, he'll have to consider his options and if the team's not going to look into win trophies. The worrying thing is when he said it, when the times when he said it before, um, the team was progressing, so there wasn't much of an issue with him saying that. But now you look at the team and, and, you're, and we're not really progressing, are we? We're kind of, um, this season was very clear the team has regressed. So that obviously, obviously it makes it a bit more worrying uh, that he says it now. But it's no real surprise that he sees this is what, this is what he said. I'm not particularly what, that, that worried that he's going to leave or he's going to push for a move, uh, not this summer anyway. Um, also, I, considering... His injury record, I do question whether the teams are going to shell out big, big money for him. If, um, if he's, if you know, the last three seasons now, he's had a big injury or an injury has kept him out for at least a month or so out of a season. And teams look at these sort of things. And um, I, so I question whether teams will spend big money on him, um, if that's the case. But I'm not too worried just yet um, if he's going to leave. Obviously, there's sort of so much uncertainty surrounding the Premier League this season. Um, we you know don't know whether where, where, where it's going to start again. Whether if we have if 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 the season does get cancelled, whether that puts us back in the Champions League and he'll be more willing to stay. So a lot more factors. But even if the worst thing does happen and he does leave at, what, uh, at the end of the day, and we do get big money for him, I'm sure we can reinvest it. And and you know I think the club are at a stage now where, where we are an attractive proposition where a big player, a big striker would see us as a, 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 as a chance to lead the line at a club like Tottenham um, with good players around him. I don't think it would be a case where maybe a few years ago if Harry Kane left, we would be struggling to find good options. I think we would, we would be able to replace him. Yeah, I think, I think you're right in saying that we would we be able to replace him, but would we replace him cleverly enough to replace the goals that we're missing if Harry Kane were to leave? That's the question. Yeah, I'd like to think we would be able to do. We would be able to do. I did look. Kane gets 30, 30, 35 goals a season. Whether we can find someone straight away who can, who's going to be able to replace those goals, that's a big question. Probably not. But whether, but, but can we find a player who's who would be able to 
maybe bag 20 goals a season and ho hopefully the other players around him can make up the extra goals. You have to hope so. It's I don't, I'm off the top of my head, there's obviously there's not many, too many strikers in Europe who are of the class of Harry Kane. Yeah. There's, there's no doubt about that. I can't come, I'm not going to sit here and say, yeah, it's going to be very easy to replace Harry Kane all his goals. It's not going to be easy, but I do think it'll be possible to get a player in and um, who... Uh, who is of very good quality, maybe not of Harry Kane's quality, but of the quality of to get 20, 25 goals a season. I think we can find that player. And I think Spurs is an attractive proposition now. I don't think players will be turning their noses up at joining Spurs. I think they'll see it's a good opportunity um, to lead the line for a club like Spurs. So I, I don't think it's all doom and gloom. But yeah, who, I don't know, who, if I was to pick a player to replace Harry Kane, who would I pick? It's a very good question. I'd probably who, go for Timo Werner, to be honest. Timo Werner. That's probably a good shout. It's probably a very good shout, actually. Um, because, obviously, if you're looking to replace Harry Kane, obviously, I don't think most top clubs, we could sign players from them. I, I would, you'd be thinking of players, you know, who play, like, who are either fourth, fifth or below in their leagues. I think the top three teams in each league, they, they probably wouldn't consider joining us. So, yeah, Timo Werner is a great shout. Timo Werner is a very good shout, actually. Um, Do you think um, that point still stands, though, if we're playing Europa League football next season? I think so. I think it just about stands. because Just because you look at Arsenal, it hasn't hit them too hard in terms of signing players. You know, they've still got to sign Lacazette and Aubameyang when, uh, while playing Europa League football. So I do think um, they would join, players would join. The only trouble is would have to pay them big money because you have to make up the, the, the gap somehow. If you're not paying, playing Champions League, you need to be able to pay big, big wages. So um, we'd have to look at either matching Harry Kane's 200 grand a week, probably, if we're going to bring in a star, starting striker. Yeah, but that's the thing. You know, we've already heard from Daniel Levy saying that if we don't make Champions League, it's going to impact our transfer window. So yeah, but, I'm thinking, but if we're getting, if Harry Kane's leaving, I'm assuming that's like a, a, at least 100, between 100 and 150 million. Yeah. So, so you've got to think of money, that money will be reinvested. Yeah, you've got to think so. But like I said before, uh, well, I didn't say it before, but with Gareth Bell and when we used all his money, we didn't use it wisely. Um, and to be honest, I don't trust the hierarchy of Spurs to use it wisely, this money. I really don't. I think that we... We always go for not the kind of top top end of the spectrum that we need to be going for. We need to we go for like 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 we've said all the time before, Daniel Levy, you know, we go for certain targets and we end up getting targets below them, albeit that point doesn't really stand on the Tangi and Dombele and La Celso kind of. So maybe things have changed. I would say that I agree with that statement, but I would say um, when we when we to replace players. I don't think we go as cheap as when we're just looking to build on what we have. And we have a good settled team. Yeah, we don't replace them at all. Um, well, you got to say, when we sold Bale, you have to say they did reinvest the money and they didn't, they didn't, they didn't it's not like, like they cheaped out. It's not like they were, bit, they were, they were we had targets for bigger money or too many of them. You know, we, we, uh, I think we went for the players that we wanted to get, I think, at that, at, at that time. I think maybe a few players we missed out on, but I think most of the players... I don't think we cheaped out in when we were, when we sold Gareth Bale. I think we spent pretty big money on a lot of big players. Look, look, Soldado was one of the... I know he didn't work out, but he was one of the most sought-after strikers in Europe at the time. You know, Christian Eriksen was one of the, was a rising prospect. Lamelo had just had an amazing season at Roma, so he was commanding big money. All these players were commanding big money at the time, and we did stump up the cash. So I do, I do think if we were to replace Harry Kane, I don't think we would cheap out. I don't know if we would spend £150 million on one player. Probably not, but I do think we'd be probably willing to spend like £80 million. And, you know, a good, a good player who I probably would have taken if Harry Kane left was Lukaku, but he obviously has gone to Inter Milan now. Actually, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have minded. But maybe his strike partner, Martinez, he'll be one to look at. I oh, think he'd he, be a very, he's banging in goals at the moment. Well, he was banging he'll in a, goals. He'll be a very good option. He'll be a really good option. Yeah, and he would fit in with the kind of Argentinian uh, players that we got in the squad as well. Um, but I think the main, the main thing about Harry Kane, um, obviously we've heard these comments before from him. The main thing is... Does he see us progressing? Does he see Mourinho the right man to take us forward? Um, and is Jose the right man to take us forward? 
Well, as Harry was saying, also, which people haven't really picked up on as much as his other comments, he said that, you know, Mourinho's come in and he has a great relationship with Jose and he's, he's looking forward to Jose putting a stamp on the team and he's looking forward to how the team progresses. So I think, I think things at the moment with Jose are OK. I don't think it's... I know the results of late haven't been going our way before the whole coronavirus thing hit, but is he the man to take us forward? That's the big question. That is the yeah. big question. I still, I think, I would prefer Poch Dade, in all honesty. I, I said that at the time, and I, st- I, think I still stand by that. I think... I don't think Jose is a, is a man to progress teams usually. He usually likes a settled team, and he usually likes to... Um, he usually likes a team that, that's already have the have the players there. So I don't know. I don't know if he's the right man in all honesty, but I'm just hoping that he can can develop his own style in our in the in the players that we have and help us progress. But it's gonna take time. It is gonna take time. And we can see that. And I, I'm I do worry whether he is the right man to take us forward. I, I, there are some things that do make me question uh, if he's the right fit for for our club, the way he plays football and the way things, what I've seen so far. But I do feel like maybe we have to cut a bit of slack. Yeah, I mean, more time. yeah, I mean, I think when, you, when you're talking about Mourinho and if he's the right man to take us forward, all you've got to do is look back to Pochettino's first season. You know, there were some very yeah. questionable decisions there. Or Eunice Kabul made captain, Adebayor vice-captain. Um, a lot of people... Uh, at the beginning, weren't on the Poch bandwagon, were they? I know a few fans who wanted Poch out after the first season, who who didn't want who didn't want him to uh, progress. Not and not not even after his first season, even at the beginning of his second season, I think we didn't win the first four games. I think we drew three and lost one. And there are a lot of fans asking very serious questions of Pochettino at that time. And then I think we we started to get a couple wins slowly but surely. We, you know, just got a couple one nil wins on the board, and then we had that massive win against Man City, and then the season took off from there. But there were serious questions of Pochettino in his early career. Even Pochettino said he was very close to getting the sack when, um, when, when we. He said he was very close to getting a sack um, before Harry Kane scored that deflector free kick. So things can change very quickly in football. If, if given time. And I think even, you know, Jurgen Klopp took time to settle in his team. He didn't have a great first season. Look at um, um, Pep Guardiola, his first season at Man City, he finished fourth. He didn't have a particularly good season. Um, uh, people question whether his um, tactics were right for the Premier League, um, even at that time. So I think given, I think we need to give Mourinho time to put his philosophy in the team. I think next season we'll see the real Mourinho team. So I th- and then you've got to be more confident. I mean, just so far, what I've seen, at least with Pochettino in his first season, you kind of got a glimpse of his philosophy and how it worked. You know, when we beat Chelsea 5-3, um, there were a few performances in that season where you really got a glimpse of how he likes to play. And now it's a positive thing. What we've seen so far of Mourinho, haven't really seen a glimpse of anything that's been really, really positive so far. Except, for, you know, we beat Man City 2-0, but even in that game, we got a bit lucky. Um, so we, we're we still waiting for that real moment where the Mourinho team arrives, but you have to give him a bit more time. Yeah, I mean, in the history of Jose Mourinho, what he's always needed for success is, apart from at Porto, was a big bank balance and a big um, budget to spend on transfers and stuff like that. And when you go back to Klopp and um, Pep Guardiola as well, they only really flourished off. They spent all that money as well. So is Jose going to need that to flourish at Spurs? Probably. He's probably going to need his money to sign the players that he wants, for sure. He's going to, he needs to get rid of the players he doesn't want. He needs to just shape the squad in his, in his image. That's the way he's going to have to do it. So whether he gets that money or not, it's a big question, obviously. He said there's not going to be a massive rebuild in the summer. So whether he, whether he just wants a few tweaks or whether he's, that's him saying, I'm not going to get what I want, I'm not sure. But he said there's not going to be a big rebuild in the summer. So there's a lot of questions around the, the where, where this Tottenham team is going. Obviously, there's a lot of uncertainty. And this uncertainty has been thrown into even more uncertainty of the whole coronavirus thing. We don't even know if we're going to be in Champions League next season or we, it has the season ended. When's the transfer window going to open? All these things are so uncertain. So who knows at the moment? Yeah, well... 
that's the hot topic of, at the moment. Harry Kane's comments last night with Jamie Redknapp on Instagram Live. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of these comments. Um, is Jose the right man to take us forward? Um, and will he get the budget in the summer or whenever the transfer window opens to sign the players he wants? But let's move on to the next topic. And we are going to be talking about Bergwijn and Hyun Son both going home for different reasons. Um, Bergwijn's going home because um, he's had a baby. His his wife's had a baby in Holland, so he's going yeah, home. Mazel to, spend... to Stephen Bergwijn. Exactly, Mazel Tov to Stephen Bergwijn. Um, and Hyun Min Son's going home for personal reasons. We're, we're unsure what those personal reasons are, uh, so don't really want to speculate, but that doesn't sound good, to be honest. Doesn't sound good. He's probably just there to be with his family, I'm guessing. I've got no yeah. idea. Oh, I don't know. I've got no idea. Look, uh, I think it's good that they're getting that time to to be at home. I think it's good that the club allowed Stevie B to go home to Holland to be with his baby. At this time, it, they don't need to be in this country. There's no need for them to be here. Football's on hold for the time being. So, what well, what use is it uh, hanging around? I know I've had, I, the the club. They're not training anymore. Everyone's training at home. So, yeah. I mean, I don't know what else to talk about on that subject. Yeah, human sons just come back and done his two weeks quarantine. Now he has to go back. <laughs> Yeah, and he's going to come back and do even more quarantine, probably. Um, but those are two players who we're, we're still waiting for them to get fit. I don't know if they're... I know Son's fit now, I think, kind of. Yeah, uh, Bergwijn's still injured. He's still injured, so uh, hopefully I'll give him a chance to reflect on his t uh, the short time he's been at Spurs and um, get fit, hopefully, at home. What do you make out of Bergwijn so far? I've been impressed. Obviously, I think it's still... I think. His first few couple games were very, very good. I was really impressed, especially when he played against um, Aston Villa. I thought he had a great game then. But they did drop uh, off a little bit, didn't he? Yeah, he dropped off a bit, but I think that it wasn't helped by the fact um, that a lot of the pressure was on him from an attacking standpoint. He had so many injuries. He was kind of... Well, there were some games he was our only outlet. He's, he's been made to play uh, up front. He's been made to play out position a bit sometimes. So it's not been the easiest start for him at Spurs. But I, I, like, I like the look of him. I think he's got a lot of quality. He's going to give us a lot of uh, quality um, when he comes back. And I'm excited to see him, you know, when... when when we've got our full strength attack and uh, full flowing with Kane, Bergwijn, Son, I'd like to see that front three, how that goes. 100%. I think Bergwijn's uh, got some great uh, talent in his armoury and uh, I'm just excited to see it more, to be honest. It's a shame yeah. that he came and he was pretty much thrown into the deep end playing every single game, every single minute of every game. Uh, no chance yeah, for any... I remember he from Holland. Holland's a, the, the league's less um, intense than the Premier League. And he's not used to playing as many football games as he is right now. And, you know, they think they, they don't usually play twice a week like, like we do here in England. So, it, and he's, yeah, as you said, he was thrown into the deep end. So it's going to take some time. And it's just, it's, it's a positive he made an instant impact, but it's going to take him a bit of time to properly settle in and see the best of him. Yeah, definitely. Um, let's move on and we're going to talk about Toby Alderweireld and he has been doing some great work and he's been giving out dozens and dozens of um, tablets to hospitals so sick people can keep in contact with their family. Great work from Toby Alderweireld there. Yeah, he's a top, top lad and I think it shows the kind of character he is in this time of need. He's stepping up and he's actually providing for people who, you know, they need to speak to loved ones or, you know, people in hospital who can't, who are obviously very lonely at this this time. They're not able to speak to people. People aren't even allowed to visit them because of the current situation. But for him to do that is, is an amazing thing. And he's it just shows the character of, of Toby that he's um, that he's providing, you know, iPads for people uh, to, to help them with their loneliness. What a man. Absolutely amazing, amazing guy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely amazing. Uh, and let's move on to our last point, and that is the proposed, well, not even proposed, but the kind of rumoured way that they're going to end the Premier League season, and which is a kind of World Cup-style um, intense tournament where teams will be playing every other day or every three days, every game to be televised behind closed doors, uh, what can you tell me about that? Is there anything happening there? Well, we don't know yet. Obviously, it's uh, all up all up in the air at the moment. But there's a few rumours flying around that they're considering um, a World Cup-style tournament to end the season. Um, you know, everyone playing nine games. They're saying all 92 games as well will be televised 
live on TV, yeah. um, which would be which would be exciting if that was to happen. Obviously, it will look by the time um, that would come around near the end of June or whatever. Um, everyone would be so desperate for some live sport. I think that that a festival of football like that, a tournament, uh, would would pro- obviously would re- replace the Euros as well. Um, that kind of tournament that's been delayed. So I think that'll be very exciting. I'd, obviously, would all be that'll that'll be a, that'll be amazing. But I just don't think it's feasible. I really don't. I think players playing that amount of football in such a short space of time, um, especially given the fact there'll be very um, it will be a very short time between the end of quarantine. And going into that tournament, I don't know if that's possible. I don't even know if it's possible for us to be playing football by the end of June. We'll have to wait and see. But it's very interesting that the, one of the UEFA chiefs um, said that if football isn't, um, if we haven't completed the seasons by the end of June, um, then it's actually quite likely that we're going to lose the season. So yeah. that was quite a worrying thing for what he was saying. Um, I think this is obviously a Hail Mary. It's the last option. It'll be our last um, recourse if we are able to restart the season to kind of try, try and do a mini tournament. But I have serious question marks whether that's feasible because players are going to need a little bit of time between quarantine and going back into football to kind of get their fitness back, um, get back into the swing of things. It's not going to, they're not going to be able to just go straight back into football after quarantine. So... Um, Obviously, I'd be excited if that was the case. I'd be looking forward to that a tournament thing. I would, I would be, I'd be loving that. Obviously, as football fans, the more football, the better. But there are big question marks. I I'm not, I'm not so sure. If it was up to you, how would you finish the season? I don't know. I mean. Is there's no real way to say because we don't know where, when's the best when when we're going to come out of it. So we don't. I can't. I, I can say I like to finish season this way, but it's, it doesn't matter because things can things are changing so quickly. When no, when no one's going to know when quarantine's going to end or when you know they said we could we could be going on like this for six months. That's what they said in the press conference yesterday. So. If, it, if in six months' time we're still like, well, I don't know if we're, new, I don't know if we're going to be in quarantine, but if things haven't gone back to normal in six months' time, then you're going to have to say the season's gone. You're going to have to say we have to cancel the season. What, what more can we do? So that, that would have to be the case. But uh, yeah, I think, I think a, a little tournament has to be in that something like that. I think that'll be exciting for the fans to watch. I think, and it has to be in the most efficient way because if that's how they do it, do it in the World Cup, so just a month of a month tournament like that. That'll be the way that we have to do it as well. But that, that obviously, I'll be massively in favour of that uh, method. But it's so hard to kind of come up with something because we just don't know how long it's going on for. It's just yeah. impossible to say. Yeah, and I think I kind of share your view saying, I don't think that kind of tournament this summer is feasible. I really don't. I think that, I think the only option is to, to make this season null and void. I can't see a way around it just because of the uncertainty around it all. Yeah, the more this goes on, the more I'm hearing, the more it looks like it will be null and void. Yeah. Well, then anyway, that, that, that brings away it's all the on your other set of questions as well. If it is null and void, what happens the next season? Who knows? Uh, well, if it's null and void, surely you just start from scratch like you started from the season, um, the season that just began. So... Uh, the same European teams, the same teams in the league, um, which which makes a knock-on effect to all the leagues, to be honest, because you don't know who's going to get promoted and relegated from all of them. So that means that every... Transfer window, do you cancel the transfer window? That's different because contracts have been signed and, and players have joined clubs. I think that's a bit of a different case, but I think you start the season... No, but it's also, if the season's not avoid, if someone has uh, five years left on their contract, do they now only have four years? Because that sold the whole season when? Do you just lose a year of your contract? Probably. You know, yeah, you if, if you, Kane was going on a hundred percent. Yeah, you lose a year of your contract. I Why? That's, pardon? So the season's null and void. The season is null and void, but you're not signing players up for specific seasons. You're signing them up from 2020, 2025. You're not saying you need to play a guaranteed of five seasons in between there. It's just the dates, the tra- the contracts up. It's all very, uh, it's all up in the air at the moment. 
yeah well anyway let us know in the comment section below what do you think the right way to end the season is uh, do you think that we should finish the season in this kind of World Cup style shootout or should the season just be null and void? Let me know in the comment section below what you think. And as well of all the other points that we raised, mainly the Harry Kane uh, comments that were mentioned on Instagram live yesterday. Uh, thanks, Simeon, for joining me yet again. Uh, like, subscribe and comment below. And as always, come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs.